Yeah, good morning, everyone, um, to and welcome to this uh, webinar, Emotions AI, uh, and the topic driving growth with emotional segmentation. I'm really happy to see you all here today in today's webinar and to welcome Benoit again on, on this stage of the webinar. Hi, Benoit, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, so, and hi, everyone. Yeah, really uh, pleased to, uh, to be here. Same for us. And hi, Andre, welcome to you as well. Bon we've already <laughs> we've already been in this constellation um, a few months ago. I remember Benoit. At this stage, I remember that Emotions AI was just freshly on the market, and you gave a short introduction on how it works and uh, what it can um, give uh, companies. Um, and I know that today you already brought some use cases because now after some months, uh, people are really using Emotions AI and Andre and I are really excited and curious to see how it works in practice. Yeah, and um, Andre, we've talked before and I think you have some background to this whole uh, topic of emotional yeah. segmentation. <laughs> and I would love to hear the anecdote that you've shared before. Um, so maybe you want to share that with the audience as well. Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I was just reflecting that I think it was back in 2009 or 10, so nearly 15 years, we rented an MRI scanner at uh, Berlin University, Charité. Well, there was a professor. I said, well, we can do functional MRI. It means you can see which areas of the brain were active. And um, the hypothesis was that different designs of a website are able to um, activate your kind of emotional uh, centers of the, of the brain with a different intens intensity. So that's it. It was very basic. Um, and it was thrilling, you know, with this uh, horribly expensive machine. And the thing uh, was that we wanted to prove to marketers the importance of design and emotions uh, how how are we activating people with with emotions uh, that's it uh, that was the whole thing it it delivered um a lot of pr for us some of them tried to put us in the they are evil marketers manipulating people but we clearly we we wanted to find out how are people reacting to design so we can make experiences more relevant to them that was really really expensive and uh, complicated uh, but it worked we were all thrilled when um, an, an elderly later uh, was in the in the MRI tube and the website design that we were showing was clearly not made for her but uh, it was so neatly designed she fancied the shoes I mean they would not have fitted to her or whatever but everybody was so amazed when we could measure the the spikes in the emotional activation. The professor, he said, well, well, the nucleus accumbens is activated. Fantastic. <laughs> so, I mean, this was, this was like 15 years ago. And today when I see that we can do this data-driven on-site in real time, so fascinating uh, to see how far we have come. Uh, that was, yeah, that was a whole story. <laughs> Good That's memories. Actually, yeah, really good memories. Wow. And and you said that uh, making experiences even more relevant was already the goal um, 15 years ago. And that's still the sure. goal, right? Uh, just yeah. the, the methods have, have changed. And we will today have a look at yeah what actually we can do now uh, with particularly Emotions AI. And that's why, Benoit, I'm really happy uh, to have you here to give us some insights into that topic now. Before we dive into the topic itself, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, for you. Maybe you can go a few slides further. Thanks. Um, so to all of you who are here, please feel free to make this an interactive webinar. We want to ask um, or answer your questions. So feel free to ask questions in the chat and Andre will hand them over to Benoit. So Benoit will do the main presentation and Andre is kindly supporting in uh, giving the questions from the audience to Benoit. We also have prepared two surveys for you because we want to hear your opinion on how you're using things or what is relevant for you. So please take part in these polls. I will let you know when they are live and moderate them. And of course, you will receive the recording in the end after the webinar. 
And as you can see in my background, I'm already uh, at the old opera house here in Frankfurt live on stage mm -hmm. um, because Growth Marketing Summit is just three weeks away. And Benoit and his team from AB Tasty will be live uh, at Growth Marketing Summit. So if you don't have your ticket yet, uh, feel free to use their code AB Tasty to save 100 euros and join us on 19th of June to see all of us live. And we would love to network with you and uh, see you there. Yeah, make sure you, you order quickly because I just received the document where I um, should uh, give my sig signature for the for the catering. So if you and don't I if you don't order your ticket, you won't get food. Well, the food <laughs> is already ordered. <laughs> yeah, actually, we are running out of tickets. It's, yeah. it's I mean, it's three weeks before the event, so yeah. we are almost sold out. So yeah, better be quick. Benoit, so I hand it over to you and I'm really happy to see you on 19th of June, but now we're looking forward to a great presentation with uh, some great insights. Uh, thank you, Julia. Uh, yeah, and uh, hi uh, everyone. So yeah, I, I take the mic to um, to tell you yeah a bit more about so Emotions AI, so in action. Uh, and so I'll make some, of course, some introduction so, to the topic, complementary to uh, Andre, uh, introduction uh, to yeah to present you uh, what can be activation today without MRI scanner, but just based on uh, so how people move uh, online. Yeah, that's um, not recommended yeah. with the MRI scanner. It's too expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's... Not really <laughs> agile. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Um, yeah, and before um, so digging into uh, emotions, I, I wanted to yeah to uh, to just uh, maybe uh, simply uh, present myself. So uh, uh, today I'm product manager of Emotions AI, so a product of AB Testy, and uh, this uh, product come from a startup that was acquired by AB Testy last summer, a startup that I founded, so uh, Dotaki it was uh, yeah called, and I'm the one so. Uh, uh, in the company who uh, so created the algorithm uh, so um, yeah based on data AI um, and because yeah I have kind of a mixed background uh, both in engineering so a lot of data and also uh, a PhD in economics uh, about understanding people so uh, what I love <laughs> yeah is building products uh, with data that enable to better understand people and especially online and emotions AI. So this is the last one of them. And yes, we have created emotions AI exactly uh, to follow the same quest as Andre. So better understand what makes, uh, so what gives emotions to uh, to people, but yeah, based on uh, how they behave uh, online. And so, um, so emotions, so why? It is the so a main quest because we have the, the feeling that it's something important. Uh, that's something that we uh, we see in our uh, everyday life uh, when we look at people and look at how they decide. We see that so it's um, kind of always emotional. But uh, when you are online, it's yeah uh, really not that easy to uh, to understand this uh, this emotion. Because basically online, you have your data that you find in analytics. In your analytics tool, you can have split your audience with technical uh, segments. So, or maybe you can make some surveys. So knowing a bit more about, okay, for this kind of age of people, they prefer this kind of product. Or for uh, so, uh, men prefer this other kind of product. But it's really usually surface level. And it's really difficult to really deeply understand what uh, make people uh, yeah make their decision or and finally buy and the more we uh, dug into the understanding of what make uh, people decide and buy the more we see that so emotions and psychology uh, is something really important um, and in fact, that's something that brands uh, do in their daily basis. So using and triggering uh, so customer uh, psychology to better sell and provide a better experience. For instance, uh, yeah, science has shown that uh, yeah, people uh, people perceive a shorter wait wait time when they hear music they like. That's something. So it doesn't change the actual time, but when they perceive so a good music, 
the feeling, the experience is better. And so a better experience in a so a waiting line, uh, it's basically uh, perceive it shorter. Uh, also, uh, yeah, research has shown that yeah, sixty percent of customers are more likely to buy a product with the word guaranteed. Uh, it's it also doesn't change the the product in itself, but there is a perception uh, to yeah uh, of reinsurance by simply the label uh, yeah guaranteed, and in the same uh, way of not changing the product but presenting it in a different way apple uh to present the the, the phones and the laptops uh with a specific angle that really invite visitors to touch them so the yeah the laptops are all the same but they really see that the angle um make them uh more engaging doesn't change the product just the way you present it and trigger the right psychological reaction to um, to engage the customer and provide a better experience. Yeah, basically that is uh, more uh, engaging. And uh, the last example I wanted to share is uh, based on a, another sense uh, where so also it's a uh, yeah Nike um, uh, that use um, so perfume to better, uh, so to improve the experience online, uh, not online, but offline, um, to, uh, yeah, to make uh, their shoes uh, more appealing. And so uh, people are so willing to pay more with the right so, uh, experience. You don't change the shoes, just the experience around it. Yeah, these examples were just here to, uh, to show them that, so, the way of so triggering good emotions uh, really provide an emotional experience is something that yeah brands do on a daily basis more offline but now with emotions ai uh, what we are trying to do is uh, really providing a tool that enable brands to do the same uh, online and here's an example of how to, so again, not change the product you want to sell, but change the way you present it. Um, here, you can personalize if you make two so broad groups of uh, users, uh, a group of intuitive users and a group of more rational users, the perfect experience and the more, uh, the most engaging one won't be the same to buy the same product. So if you want to sell a skirt for intuitive people, you better have to use warm colors and so human beings to, um, to provide a really living experience. Whereas for other kind of people, more rational one, you will better, so the best experience is more focused on product and information and detailed facts and numbers um, to, uh, yeah, to highlight your uh, your your product and make it shine you don't make it shine and you don't make it engaging the same way uh, depending of uh, people and that's something very at, really at the core of emotions AI is to take into account that uh, all people so feel emotions so emotions are really central uh, in the experience online but depending on people, uh, they will uh, react differently to the various triggers. So emotions are important, but you have to use the right trigger to, uh, yeah, to use them wisely and efficiently on every kind of, uh, of visitor. So that's, in fact, the dream to provide the best experience for everyone online. We have all the so numerical uh, tools, so website with really responsive design and you, uh, with code, you can do everything. But yeah, the reality is that uh, in a daily basis for uh, CRO teams, um, you, you can't uh, make everything you want uh, because you don't have that much time. And if you want to uh, pursue the, this, uh, this dream and reach this, this dream of 
So a really personalized and uh, so tailored experience for everyone, you have to, to get a simple tool that can be efficient. Uh, so um, right now, so in a very short term, and that can be actionable in a really easy, easy way without having to so uh, to build all the pipes to feed everything with uh, with data and use many tools, and that's exactly what we uh, wanted to do with Emotions AI, and that we have uh, in fact that we have done is to a package in one single product and one single user segmentation uh, tool, uh, all the knowledge about so emotional triggers to make them really easily actionable online. And so here is the result. So um, with Emotions AI, based on the analysis of online behavior in real time, so after 30 seconds of analysis, we are able to detect what is the main emotional trigger for every visitor. And so uh, we have detected, so uh, we have 10 um, different emotional uh, triggers that then they are 10 basic human needs, emotional needs. And uh, so as human, we have all these needs. So we all want to be first in competition, we all want to receive marks of attention. We all want to feel safe, uh, also to uh, to live in a comfortable and so easy environment. Uh, we all have a sense of community. We uh, value the the sense to um, uh, to yeah to have a link with other people. We also want to uh, um, to get so immediately what we want uh, and also trust so well-known brands we all want to understand things um, in our over environment we love new uh, yeah new stuff we value novelty and also the quality of product that's basic human needs but for every one of us uh, we all have one need that is more important than the other and that's exactly what emotions AI detects uh, online. That's the main need uh, of each visitor and the one that will trigger uh, so the, the biggest impact, positive impact uh, in terms of uh, so online uh, experience and in terms of so engagement in the online journey. So we, uh, we've built this uh, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, one one second. Uh, I so this list doesn't come from nowhere. It's based really on the latest uh, science about UX uh, research and how to evaluate uh, user experience online. Um, and yeah, based on uh, our AI, we have uh, made this summary of these ten most important needs, and we have also. Uh, make some, yeah, a lot of interviews with uh, professional to know what they are working on to, uh, to, yeah, to, yeah, improve on their website and, yeah, for instance, the safety. So I don't know uh, one website uh, that doesn't have, uh, so didn't work uh, on reentering uh, their visitors. Yeah, and you yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Benoit. Um, yeah, and now we wanted to know from you uh, what are for you the top three emotional needs uh, according to the um, their importance in your business. Because Benoit said these are the top they have uh, top ten that they have categorized. Um, so you can please choose in the survey in the poll question that you see now um, three of them which are in your company the most important ones. If there is still one missing or you have one that is important, please also feel free to type that in the chat. So we give you a few um, seconds. Andre, any comments here from your side? Yeah, I, I, I'm really interested, uh, of course, in understanding how how this works, you know, with, as I said, with more 15 years of experience, I know how hard it is to detect different emotional preferences in people because 
the context is so important. Um, as you said, Benoit, all these preferences are there. People want all of that. It's maybe that as a business person, it's a lot about competition and immediacy. When you get home, it's more about comfort, the community, you're the family guy. So I think this is a common critique that emotional preferences within people are not something constant. Their preferences and they change with con mm -hmm. uh, context. So it's really thrilling to see that you, you are analyzing this in real time based on data. As I said, it's hard to measure, you know, we, we've yeah. experimented with questionnaires that are like 15 pages long uh, and are more on the explicit um, side. And yeah, for example, to differentiate between safety and uh, uh, whatever, notoriety, that that might be really hard. I would love to learn how you do that. <laughs> Before we uh, dive into that, um, let me end the poll and show you the results. Um, it's interesting to see. Here you see Safety. it. So uh, <laughs> Safety. quality, quality uh, apparently is the top emotional need that people see here with 65% of people saying it. Oh. Um, and then we have with 55% safety and 40% understanding. And also interesting, 0% notoriety. <laughs> And I, I assume that this is a result of uh, non-agile uh, company cultures that try to go the safe way all the time. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, so uh, the fact is that so it's not far from what we observe. Uh, so with the emotions they are. Um, so yeah, safety uh, is ranked second uh, in the yeah in this uh, mm. uh, poll, and so today uh, it's the number one uh, mm. on the audience of website that we analyze uh, on yeah more than hundred websites. Uh, it's really the number one that we detect, um, and here it's also interesting to see that understanding doesn't uh, rank far so uh, it's really on the on the top uh, that's something that is usually uh, quite uh, frequently mentioned by uh, end users they want to understand more and if we um, so uh, when we interview people they tend to uh, ask very frequently to to have more information but uh, when applying emotions ai as it's really uh, so uh, behavior and database, uh, we see that, uh, in fact, it's a, a bit smaller part of user uh, that really have understanding as the main driver. So understanding is currently ranked to, uh, on average, the, the number four. And the maybe the last comment on the, uh, on the results of the poll is the need for quality. Uh, that is something that is also uh, so quite frequently uh, asked by uh, users when we so re ask them the question. But uh, what we have found, uh, so based on uh, online behavior and the actual uh, so act of purchasing, is that it's really uh, not frequent to have it as the main driver. Usually, it's more uh, so more frequent to have safety, understanding, or even competition. So people looking for to have the best product uh, before the other, um, and in the shortest time to yeah to to be the first or have the best. And yeah, competition uh, seems to uh, uh, to be a, a stronger need on average than the the quality. Just to feel to be in a, in a competitive environment uh, and to be a, just like a hunting for the best product uh, and be the one that will get this uh, this best product and being able to uh, to show it to everyone that you uh, you, you get the the prize mm -hmm. the, the the first prize but thanks for your participation uh, to this poll it's it was really uh, also interesting to uh, yeah, to see the difference between uh, what we say and what we do. Um, 
if you have uh, yeah some hints about the differences between yeah declared preferences and revealed uh, preferences. Um, yeah. And as I said, safety is uh, yeah the, the first, so the most frequent uh, need among users. The second one is competition. That's why I will show you uh, two use cases uh, about this uh, uh, yeah, lever uh, yeah, leveraging this, uh, this need. To start with one about safety, yeah, it was made on a so beauty brand. A cosmetic uh, brand, Clarence, um, so in France. They, so we detected that people looking for safety first uh, didn't engage really well on the product list page, so a bit less than the, the others. So we wanted to, uh, to provide a better experience for them, a more reassuring one. And um, we've tried to push this uh, little pop-in by displaying that payment is 100% secure uh, with free delivery uh, and a loyalty program. So um, yeah, in order to yeah to reinsure them and specifically specifically uh, also showing um, something about loyalty, so uh, it, which is kind of a trust uh, relation with the brand. So. Um, and here, uh, so that's really the so Clarence team uh, that work uh, about this design, just based on the guideline about what can uh, be pleasant for uh, people looking for safety, and they manage to to do that. So based on this information and the so the, the design uh, about this variation, uh, so having in mind that. In the uh, so normal website, that was no popping about it. So, based on your feeling and your experience, uh, how much more uh, conversion could be gained with uh, this uh, with this popping? Yes, and thanks, Benoit. I already started the poll, so you can yeah. make your guess here um, and tell us what you think. Um, how much uh, the conversion rate was impacted in this example? So you see uh, the poll up here. I give you a few more seconds. Andre, I guess you have something in mind. Please do not share it yet. <laughs> okay, so let me give you, let's say 20 more seconds. Oh, but almost all of you have already voted. That's amazing. So thanks a lot for this interaction. Yeah, and the ones who don't vote, we see you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so better click now. <laughs> okay, let me stop the poll and show you the results. And then you can, of course, comment what you thought, Andre. Um, so here are the results. Uh, so we have 50% of you. The, here's the German vote. Here's the German vote, exactly. Rounds 12 <laughs> points. So we have 50% of you who say uh, between 5 and 10%. 32% think it's between 10 and 15%, 9% think it's between 15 and 20%. And then under five and uh, over 20% is 5%. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good, uh, so an interesting uh, Can you show the results? And... Andre, what would you think? Yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one, you know. Um... To, to be honest, I uh, I saw so many different results for signals like this, and maybe it is because of a lack of segmentation of different types. Um, so I don't dare to to uh, predict it. To be honest, it could be something between one point eight and whatever eighteen percent. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, expert judgment. Really, so it depends. <laughs> yeah, it, no, and yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, yeah, it depends. <laughs> Thank you for your yeah expertise, uh, yeah, and your experience. And in fact, I also see, uh, I also see that there are a lot of so expertise, uh, so with the uh, people um, who answer the the poll uh, because I see that the the. Average, so uh, most of the cases uh, were between so five and ten, 
and maybe a bit more. And so um, this judgment is the, yeah, the, in fact, the average uh, result that we, we have on a broad uh, so, uh, yeah, spectrum of uh, experiences and A-B tests. Yeah, between 5 and 10% is on average what we have. But here on this specific uh, use case, uh, we managed to get really higher uh, impacts. That's and good. So it's yeah, it's yeah higher than you use your uh, range. Um, it's and, funny. Yeah, we it, it, I had eighteen percent in my mind. I just didn't dare to say it. Uh, it's because <laughs> I think we we made a case study long before emotions the AI existed, where we tried emotional targeting with people. We we did it manually, uh, right, by def de defining the segments. And that was exactly the uplift we realized uh, on average mm -hmm. for for emotional uh, targeting. It's funny, yeah. what a coincidence! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really interesting. And the, the fact is, uh, I think the the main idea that we uh, we have to keep in mind is that providing the right message to the right people when there is a match, the reaction is is really big. So. Uh, it's not a plus one percent or two percent something difficult to measure. It's yeah. something that is quite huge. So emotions, when you push on the, when you use the right trigger, yeah. it can really make a difference. Yeah, in terms of think, experience. Yeah, I, yeah. I I think many people underestimate the the impact of emotional targeting because they're used to uplifts that um, maybe focus on on functional things and changing uh, button positions, optimizing call to action boxes, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we see average uplifts in the area of, of like one digit numbers. So for many websites, we are happy if we have enough traffic to make a 1.5% 1, 1. uplift uh, visible. Yeah. And I think that also was a very um, old uh, case study from Konversionskraft where we had one A-B test um, focusing on functional improvements um, and then the three variations uh, that were focusing on emotional improvements. It was the same layout. It was just different pictures and headlines. And uh, we measured add to cart rate here and the uplift for emotional optimization was 10 times higher, 10 times. We're like an add to cart uplift of 7% for the functional improvements and it was 70% for emotional optimization. And the critique we received for this case study afterwards was um, that first of all, because it's an online shop, how should we automize that for hundreds or thousands of products? Well, now you are here, luckily. <laughs> and the second is what well, that's too huge. The effect's too huge, we don't believe it. And then I say, well, many products are Stupid products with no value proposition, no differentiation. They're only sold because great sales people are selling them with emotion. Uh, and emotion is maybe the only driver that makes people buy certain products. So this is why we receive much higher uplifts when we optimize our emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's something about so storytelling also. So how you engage the conversation. So uh, just like also we can make a parallel with uh, offline uh, salesmen, so uh, salespeople in uh, shops. So they start by, so yeah, saying hi and yeah. engage in an emotional uh, yes. relationship with the, with the buyer before yes. presenting the product and yeah, telling a story, uh, make sure that people feel good in the shop. Um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So if anyone from the audience has some similar stories to tell or has some objections, say, well, that's, yeah. I don't believe that, guys. What are you talking about here? 18%, seriously? Please use the chat, uh, engage with us. Uh, let's let's make that interactive. We, we are open for your questions and comments. But yeah. as far as we don't have yeah. uh, something, so please continue, Benoit. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, um, but yeah, you're a your question to the audience is good, and maybe I can also tell some uh, some yeah some facts that we have measured. Because uh, um, so I as a, we we said the the yeah 
the company behind Emotion AI is here uh, for uh, some years now, uh, for four years, and we have measured everything very scientifically. Uh, all the personalization, emotional personalization uh, have been uh, launched online with control audiences in order to, to see um, how this uplift stay in time. Is it something that is just good for some weeks or is it something that is valid for a long time? And what I say some minutes ago about the so the usual range between five and ten percent, that's something that is based on long range uh, estimates. And that's why I was uh, so interesting, uh, interested by the fact that the experience of the audience uh, is good about it. So um, the estimate, and uh, there is really uh, it's a proof of the wisdom of the crowd uh, about what is a relevant long-term estimate of the really impact on sales that can be triggered uh, by yeah, emotional personalization. So here in this 18%, it just it was just uh, the result at the end of A-B test. Uh, and the, yeah, the personalization is then uh, continuing. And so that was the, the example to trigger something about so to better satisfy the need for safety and especially here the uh, hundred percent secure uh, payment and that's this is something that uh, works really uh, really good on uh, e-commerce uh, website and now uh, I will present to you something about uh, better satisfying the need for competition so mm -hmm. um, before before you continue say, Benoit there yeah. is an interesting question from the audience from Marco thanks for the question Marco asks uh, if emotional testing or targeting uh, is also uh, a valid uh, option for B2B businesses. What's your opinion? We have B2C examples yes. you're showing here. Some some of our attendees are B2B people. What's your take yeah, on this? Um, in fact, so all visitors are humans. <laughs> and uh, what we have seen is that uh, there is no uh, kind of uh, website where we don't see an impact of emotions. And uh, it works also well with B2B businesses. Mm -hmm. The B2B. only thing with B2B uh, websites is usually that there is a lower size of traffic uh, compared to a B2C. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that experiments usually need some more time to gather some uh, statistically significant uh, numbers and results, mm -hmm. but uh, we see results also. So mm -hmm. even uh, so, uh, business people, uh, so in their their daily professional practice, have a sense of uh, yep. so use their emotion to make their uh, decisions. Yes, so it's I, a, I B two B is maybe more complicated because instead of one person deciding very intuitively in one moment uh it's maybe if the business is a little bit bigger you're targeting then it's maybe a, a buying center mm -hmm. so there's a boss and a manager and somebody is preparing the decision yeah. so even more important to segment different types and do an, a targeting could you say yeah. that could you claim that targeting it's... is even more important for b2b uh in fact yeah depending on the size of the so the Usually the um, the buy button mm -hmm. has a yeah far bigger number in B two B, so mm -hmm. the items uh, can be uh, really as uh, bigger and the decision with having more impact. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that yeah, people clicking on the button uh, will have to uh, give rational uh, so arguments to the management mm -hmm. about why. Yeah, but the fact is that it's cost rationalization that's something we always do that so in a daily mm -hmm. basis we all think we are very rational yes but <laughs> the and in fact it's yeah even stronger in b2b context yes, uh, yes. but when the yeah the professional will make a, a tour of all the competitor he will make here his own uh so judgment but what mm -hmm. is engaging or not he may say, okay, oh, this website, it doesn't look professional or so uh, trusted or mm -hmm. anything, but it's a, ju a personal judgment. Mm -hmm. So if you 
find the right words, the right way to engage. So it's really, uh, yeah. so it's also important in between. So did you know that there's even a bias, a cognitive bias uh, that um, gives us the impression that we are not biased with our decisions? It's kind of the meta bias, right? Yeah. And I think that's what you refer to when in B2B people mm -hmm. uh, have the strong opinion that they're not biased, but they are. Actually, my, my colleagues Anastasia and uh, Steffi, they will have a talk at Growth Marketing Summit about biases and how product teams are influenced so as a product guy you might be interested in this uh, yeah, because everybody I mean, I thinks we are so yeah. rational but we are so biased with our decisions hmm. right so there's another question i i hope we have time for this uh that because it's uh focusing yeah. on the case you already uh showcased uh angelica she asks uh if if you can tell us uh the size the percentage uh that fell into the safety segment yeah uh yeah um so i don't have the precise number uh yeah. in mind but you so uh, safety oriented users mm -hmm. on average mm -hmm. are around one third of the audience mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um i told you that it's it's the number one need uh mm -hmm. on average on the website and it's always between 20 and even 50 percent mm -hmm. okay. sometimes really so a, a big big part Good. So, yeah, and that let, means let, uh, also. Yeah. Let, 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 <laughs> oh. re regarding the, the 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 clock, let's let's, yeah, <laughs> let's continue. Yes, yeah. uh, some, some twenty time. minutes left. So yeah, to uh, uh, okay. for yeah, zoom in the the next uh, use case. Um, so uh, and yeah, for the last slide, it's more about uh, so how it works. Uh, mm -hmm. But I I think that yes some yeah a part of the audience already mm -hmm. uh, uh, know that mm -hmm. but yeah uh, let's go to the next one mm -hmm. <laughs> here it's the need about competition and um, as I said uh, these people want to have the best product uh, and to be able to yeah uh, show yeah to show it to everyone to yeah be the first and feel the first uh, in the competition. And um, a kind of a standard way to uh, prove these people that they are buying the right, uh, the best product is to putting more uh, focus, more uh, so uh, visual, uh, so higher visual hierarchy to ratings. When you highlight so how good is the product, that's something that people looking for competition to uh, um, will they will uh, appreciate this focus on ratings and for this brand so a well-known brand uh, but we uh, we have to pixelize the, the logo um they already had something about so ratings just some stars but without that much uh, additional information and to we thought that was some room uh, to uh, put even more uh, so, uh, yeah, highlight on these ratings. And they did it by adding uh, on top of the so color of the stars to put the average rating and also the number of reviews in order to, yeah, to give even more uh, so arguments to, to say that it's really a really, really good product. And what we have seen is really a tremendous uh, so impact on the click, on the click on these reviews. So for this specific uh, group, so uh, and that was yeah more than twenty percent of the audience. Uh, the yeah the improvement, the yeah they almost doubled. So in fact more than doubled the click rate on the reviews, and so that's something huge just by adding. So the, the average and the number of review. Mm -hmm. And so the click on review is something good. So we know that we propose something really engaging, but the, the question after that is, okay, so does it really help selling more? And the answer was yes. Uh, and this one, it was in the range of five and 10%, so plus mm -hmm. 7%. So I mean, one, one question that comes to my mind is um, if, if you're um, using segmentation to, to show this and, and your effect is only, I mean, this is what I think. This is like the effect that it has on the certain segment. But 
would this change harm all the other segments? And and if not, why don't you uh, show it to the whole audience? Uh, yeah, it's it's a really good question. Uh, in fact, when we uh, we make the audit of a website showing so where there are some potential, we always advise our customers to uh, test their changes, not only for the target group, but for the whole audience, making a very standard, very usual A-B test on the whole audience, and then see if the change fits only their so initial target, or maybe also uh, was something perceived as good uh, by other kind of visitors, or maybe some of the users feel that this information, this additional information is too much. For instance, people looking for immediacy, usually value very so, um, minimalist interfaces, and they don't usually don't like when you add information on top of what is already displayed. And uh, it's quite frequent, in fact, that uh, the target group is very positive, uh, but there are some uh, other segments that react so in the opposite way. And that is also something that explains why there are so many A-B tests, so in A-B test roadmaps, when you analyze it, so many A-B tests that are quite neutral on the average audience because uh, it's, yeah, it's simply because in the audience, there are people that are really different with really different emotional triggers. And some of them will love the design that you have tested and some of them won't love. In fact, will really disengage. That's why uh, so many A-B tests are neutral. Doesn't so reach the, the, the standard of yeah, statistical um, uh, significance for decision-making. Um, so yeah, we have a bit more than yeah ten minutes uh, left. So I'll go quite quickly on the so make a yeah quick deep dive on the uh, on the technology uh, summary of so what are the so added values uh, added value of emotions there in terms of numbers about A B testing personalization and also gives you a quick recap of the of the brands um, that use. Emotions AI now, and we'll try to uh, to uh, yeah to keep some minutes uh, at the end to uh, to have live questions because yeah I don't see the chat I don't know how many questions are left and it's it's always good to uh, to have a discussion at the end. So uh, here is the the quick uh, deep dive. As I said, uh, so okay yeah emotions AI it enable a uh, brand to uh, yeah to really work on a better emotional experience for people, but how we do it. So we really need to, uh, so emotions there is something, uh, so it's really an additional module on top of A-B test. Uh, and it's something that uh, analyze uh, the, um, the behavior of visitors uh, within their, so 30 first seconds of browsing uh, in, uh, in the website. Um, and it collects two kinds of information, uh, physical interaction. So just like, like mouse speed, scroll pattern, poses. Uh, so uh, the, yeah, uh, so how wide in the screen uh, people uh, go. It's also uh, good on, uh, on mobile phones everywhere where it's uh, web-based. And the second uh, source of data is information about a uh, device that is used at the browser, so the, the size of the screen, uh, so the, the brand, for instance, either it's Apple or Samsung, uh, it's something different. There are different people. All of this uh, data are tiny clues uh, that so, uh, um, when they are or so collected um, together, give a clear view of what is important. I mean, I guess uh, um, that that's something yeah. Uh, there's there's one question from uh, Knut. Hi Knut, by the way. We have, I mean, we have GDPR and and cookies are going down, and it's harder to exchange data between different uh, tools and platforms uh, continuously. So I guess that also affects the amount of variables uh, you you can measure and the size of the audience you can 
uh, yeah. measure. How are you reacting to the GDPR and cookie race? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> GDPR is something really great, something good for users uh, so and citizens. Uh, uh, this um, data collect is only uh, done on people who accept cookies for personalization purpose. So uh, when you want to do personalization on your website, you have to ask to mm -hmm. propose and personalize experience. And mm -hmm. of course, we collect data only for people mm -hmm. who accept, who consent, mm -hmm. uh, consent to um, to uh, the final purpose mm -hmm. of personalization. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that we base everything on first party data. We don't use any third party cookies or data coming from anywhere. We just see what the user is doing right now during the 31st seconds of interaction on the website. When they land on it, how they react to the experience that is proposed. And that's enough. In fact, after these 30 seconds, we decide not to collect anything anymore. So it's enough. So it's high intensity uh, collection of first party data only for people who consented to uh, data collection. And after that, we consider it's enough. And we, uh, we know enough about the user to provide a better experience and a more engaging one. So it's fully aligned with uh, GDPR. And here are some yeah, examples of patterns that we see, for instance, yeah, mouse uh, going from left to right, so kind of pattern of hesitation. That's something that is, for instance, in, uh, very important for detecting people looking for safety. So yeah, our AI detected that uh, people uh, that are, who are really more engaged in reinsurance uh, A-B tests were people uh, who really uh, showed patterns, so hesitation pattern during the 31st seconds of online behavior. And yeah, here you have a list and we, we can't uh, disclose everything because uh, a lot of our patterns are so proprietary. So uh, the, the results like of the, uh, yeah. That's like long... the Nutella recipe. <laughs> yeah. Or Nobody knows it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, we have made extensive research on that. Uh, so more than a hundred millions uh, journey analyzed. Uh, we also we also run some yeah so ten of thousands uh, uh, so questionnaires for declared preferences, and we have analyzed the results of more than two hundred A/B tests. So uh, just to be able to make the link between on the behavior of users and the kind of uh, online experience they they prefer, um, we've done it with uh, yeah strong. Uh, so science and data science team, um, and in fact another yeah the uh, yeah PhD thesis is uh, finishing right now uh, with yeah um, the paper accepted uh, so in a nature nature uh, scientific report. So uh, we really dig dive uh, uh, yeah dig deep in the yeah, in the understanding of users and how to capture it with. Uh, data uh, with yeah first party and very so not intrusive not MRI uh, data something yeah, no, that we can do very helpful. smoothly online. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so we we are reaching the yeah. last five minutes. I don't know if we yeah. need some time for more questions or if you have more slides. Yeah. So but, but yeah, here it's the um, yeah a list of uh, yeah brands um, mm -hmm. that use. Uh, emotions AI. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so to one today, because one one question I can anticipate from from a very specific question here, basically it's um, how, how much traffic do you need <laughs> to do uh, proper uh, to 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 create proper effects, right? So we know it from every business: the more traffic you have, the bigger is the lever. Uh, mm -hmm. Emotions AI is not coming for free, I guess. <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> there is a correlation between um, the, the traffic you have on your site. Uh, yeah. So starting from mm -hmm. what kind of traffic size does it make sense to to think about? Yeah, just talking to this, you. <laughs> yeah, the starting point is uh, yeah between a hundred and two hundred thousand uh, visitor unique visitors per month. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we have uh, really happy customers uh, mm -hmm. with this kind of traffic, but mm -hmm. the ideal case is more starting at uh, yeah 500,000 mm -hmm. uh, unique visitor per month. Mm -hmm. Here, okay. uh, it's really a, a, a machine. <laughs> and uh, do I get you right that cookie consent is not needed because it works on first-party data only? Is that right? Uh, it, it is necessary because of the personalization, personalization ah, okay. purpose. Okay. So, yeah. It's okay. If, uh, but you can also use it mm -hmm. just for a better understanding mm -hmm. of your uh, so journey. Use it mm -hmm. for audit purpose to, to mm -hmm. know where. So who are your visitors and at mm -hmm. what step uh, mm -hmm. you have opportunities. Mm -hmm. And if you don't activate personalization, mm -hmm. then you don't uh, need okay. the content. Okay, so that's maybe another thought. If if I have let's say uh, two hundred thousand unique visitors a month, but only fifty percent uh, give the consent, then I might have a tough time. Yeah, it's it's really the sort of yeah the minimum size mm -hmm. uh, size to uh, uh, yeah. yeah to to get the the benefits. But yeah, mm -hmm. as I said, we we have really happy customers. Having so this kind of uh, yeah mm -hmm. uh, traffic, but it takes longer to mm -hmm. detect these personalization opportunities okay. and to yeah to have mm -hmm. clear results because we segment the yeah. the audience. So we work on yeah smaller only part parts of a traffic. Great, thank you very much, Benoit. Uh, yeah. Thank you, That's Julia. Really make 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 sure to save your ticket for Growth Marketing Summit if you don't have, uh, because all the other questions you might have, you can ask to Benoit personally. We we will meet you at the Growth Marketing Summit. We are looking forward to it. And will there be like a live demo? Can I have a look at the tool? Ah, it's a good question. So I haven't, uh, uh, yeah, analyzed the. Uh, the presentation, but yes, yeah, I can definitely uh, organize that and yeah. so open. Uh, you can make it happy. For that. Happen, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, thanks to both of you uh, for your time and for the good insights. So, uh, as I see, I don't have any questions left in the chat. Um, so I think we can close the webinar here, uh, but of course, if you have any questions left, feel always free to ask them. We will send the recording to you afterwards. And as we said, meet us all live in three weeks. It's only three weeks. So it's just around the corner, save your tickets. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, Benoit, if you have some last words, of course, I'm uh, happy to give you the stage now for the, for closing it up. No, thank you. It's, uh, it was a real pleasure to, uh, to present. So this yeah, actual, so uh, real use case uh, live. And so, yeah, I'll be really happy to come. So in Germany, maybe trying to, uh, yeah, to restart uh, speaking some uh, Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> that would be greatly maybe. appreciated. <laughs> I, Thank I you, Benoit. <laughs> See you in June. See you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.